Caddis Maximus here. This is a quick review of the Robin Air Vacuum Master 15600. Half horsepower, six cubic feet a minute vacuum pump. There's two major brands. There's the Robin Air Vacuum Master, and I always forget the second brand, um, but they both look similar. And what these are uh, most commonly seen for is either with CNC routers where they have vacuum tables, they'll either use pumps like this or much larger vacuum pumps. And very commonly in automotive shops, these are associated with uh, HVAC or air conditioning systems and both uh, evacuating them for businesses and home and automotive. When you need to evacuate or you do work on an air conditioning system, there isn't just like refrigerant that you have to pull out um, and lubricating oil that needs to be pulled out. You do need a vacuum to do that. The second issue is, is that moisture gets in there and moisture cannot be inside an air conditioning system because of the way it uses the phase change, taking a gas and compressing it and then re-expanding it in order to provide transfer of heat. If there's any water, any humidity in there, it will start freezing around what's known as the expansion valve and prevent the whole system from working at all. And so vacuum pumps uh, also dry out the systems. They will dry out anything in the chamber because what happens with water in its evaporation or even boiling point is it changes with the amount of pressure that it's against. If you use a vacuum pump like one of these, which is a known as a rotary two-stage vacuum pump, uh, it will pull down to like 50 microns, um, and it's a huge uh, deal. And what I mean by that is as you start pulling higher vacuums, you start get, getting diminishing returns. Back to the water evaporation, when you have a really low pressure, especially like one of these rotary vein vacuum pumps, even a cold system, the water will evaporate and then travel through the pump and be exhausted. And that's one of the secrets. You can dry things out with heat and desiccants and all sorts of stuff, as well as just decreasing the atmospheric pressure so that the water has an easier time of evaporating. Also, these, what I mean by the really extra high vacuum is when you use something manual like one of these Mighty Vacs, we can see. Well, let me close the valve here. I'm going to go ahead and wrench this up as high as a vacuum as I can really get by hand. These Mighty Vacs aren't the best. There's nicer metal ones, but this is about the best amount of vacuum that you can expect. It's right about 28 inches of vacuum. That would be inches of mercury, or around 72 centimeters. It actually has both gauges here. And what's happened here is right about that point, the body of air has now been depleted so much that it's getting to where uh, the molecular density of the gas that's in there is so low that each time you pump, you're not pumping like a full solid, solid column of air. You're just pumping a little bit at a time. And so you could get that gauge to measure 29 inches, but you would have to pump on it a ton. It's a really sudden uh, change. These two-stage rotary vane ones actually have two rotary pumps, kind of like how a power steering pump, or more accurately, maybe uh, how air tool motors work, but this is reverse. It runs in oil, and the oil helps provide sealing, as well as obviously lubrication. And then one vacuum pump runs right behind another one, giving you extra duty vacuum. And because it's, there's, there, it's powered in the rotary vane, it can pull a lot. Even when the gas pressure gets to the point where you're not pulling really solid air, it's more like molecules. This can now pull it down to a point with just the veins hitting the very low pressure gas. Uh, get, gets it to a point to where it's effectively for most home uses and HVAC a perfect vacuum. To get lower than what one of these pumps needs, you need something like a, what's known as a turbo molecular vacuum pump. It's, you know, they're scientific grade. But these Robin Airs are actually really pretty good um, for all their intended, you know, industrial uses and primarily evacuating HVAC systems. But it also means that they're fairly common. I actually found this one for $25 at a, you know, a home improvement kind of recycling center here in town. And I was pretty happy. It's obviously an older unit, pretty dirty, but it actually worked fine. It still had oil uh, in the pump housing. And the Robin Airs are pretty nice. This ends up being rated a half a horsepower and uses a general electric 
uh, induction motor. So these are actually designed to run continuously for hours at a time if need be. It actually has little oil caps on the front and back bearings for that induction motor. It has no brushes in the motor, so it doesn't ever wear out. Other features of this Robin Air is the exhaust. It has an intake, which is this fitting right here is where it sucks in uh, the, the vacuum. This is the, where the pump is. This is known as the oil reservoir and has a fill cap. And then, of course, on the front and the bottom, there is, if you can see, there's a little drain. And, of course, a little spyglass right here. And so these are made pretty well. Because of the heavy cast housing and the half horsepower motor, this thing probably weighs 15 or 20 pounds. So they're pretty heavy. But... It has an integrated handle, so it's designed to be carried around. The exhaust goes through the handle, which is kind of nice. A uh, thing about vacuum pumps, if you overfill them with oil, it ends up just sucking through and coming out the exhaust. So if you do overfill it, it will deal with itself, but it will end up pushing oil over the unit. And that's one of the worst things about a vacuum pump is when you overfill it, it just pumps the oil out. Normally, this inside this bolt, there's known as an... Uh, an air oil separator, which prevents the oil from getting through the bat through the system and being ejected. They have another valve, which is known as a gas ballast valve. So to prevent, you know, when you've done doing vacuuming, maybe it's put in some pulled in some air. It has this fitting, and then it has a cutoff valve known as the uh, isolation valve, and you would close that and then open this little thumb screw, and that would help uh, evacuate. Any moisture that may be run, 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 remaining in the actual uh, pump housing because you don't want to have it maybe pull in some moisture and then sit. And you do want to be kind of careful. It's usually not too bad, but if you're constantly you know, using it on and off, um, it's nice that it has that feature. And then the isolation valve just allows you to turn on or off or vary the amount of vacuum in real time. And you're always supposed to start these up when they have the isolation valve open. It runs pretty smooth. They do make some weird sounds. Let me demonstrate. A lot of volume of air is going through there. It's like a, a weird kind of vacuum cleaner. As you can hear some of those strange sounds, it's always associated with vacuum pumps, particularly these rotary vane ones, where they make like that kind of gurgly sound when you uh, pull, when it builds up and then you remove the restriction or where it builds up and releases vacuum. And I thought that was always kind of neat. So uh, this also has a nice uh, heavy duty base with rubber, thick rubberized feet. So this can be set on the ground. And that's what's great about these vacuum pumps. There's uh, lots of diaphragm type people use these for anything from, you know, powered suction cups for lifting heavy pieces of glass, all sorts of vacuum kind of home projects. It's a little difficult to use these with a vacuum sealer because those are kind of integrated units, but they do sell things like this. This is actually a Black & Decker. These are polycarbonate food vacuum uh, storage containers, and they're actually pretty interesting. It came with a whole uh special fitting here if you need to if you want to try to vacuum uh, mason jars and then just a normal fitting and how it works is there's just a little one-way valve on the top of the lid and you just put this fitting to a vacuum pump put it over this valve and it actually evacuates it and you just need to be aware of that if you're ever using vacuum pumps uh, for any kind of experiments even making homemade light bulbs you can you know roll up a little piece of carbon and make a homemade light bulb but you need to of course evacuate the air so it doesn't burn up that's where the, you need to be careful because most types of glass um, are not vacuum rated and they can be dangerous because they can collapse and of course it's like an explosion of glass. So I did want to make that point is you do need to be careful with vacuum pumps. If you're vacuuming out a container, uh, you need to make sure that it's rated for vacuum. Otherwise it can uh, explode and hurt you. And on the last note, I was just going to show how quickly this pulls up a full vacuum and can make this gauge that, and I'll once again demonstrate here, this is about as much vacuum and I'd have to pump it for an hour to get really much above 28. It just kind of stops right there. Now we'll see how quick this pulls it to 28 and we'll see if it goes higher. Actually, I know it does, but you'll be surprised how quick it is. Make sure that's open. As you can obviously see right there, maybe the gauge doesn't go all the way up, but it is just about 
peg at 30, more than one and a half inches more than I could by hand. And right there, this is making some weird sounds. We'll pull that off. It is a noisy machine. It's not too bad. Anyway, just wanted to demonstrate how this a real rotary, two-stage rotary vane vacuum pump got this to 29.5. Uh, which is, you know, near the ther theoretical maximum for any of these type of devices. So they really pull just an absolute awesome vacuum. And so I generally recommend them if you're ever in a situation where you might use one for a project or for actual HVAC work. One of these bigger rotary vane ones is going to be your best bet. And they can be found used for pretty reasonable prices. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe to the Caddis Maximus channel. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out.